right, Junior. I'll bring the jumper pack and be there in a minute. Hold your horsies. Jeez, every time you turn around. All right, I guess I'll be back in 20 then. Come on, open up. I know you're in there. Come on, open up. your attention. Ah, uh, how you like me now, huh? I just wanted my chainsaw change. This ought to get your attention. <laughs> huh? What do you think about that? Ooh, ooh, yeah. Why don't you open up now, buddy? Still don't want to open up, eh? Huh? How you like that? Yeah, I didn't think so. I could do this all day, buddy. Yeah! How you like me now? Still not getting through to you? <laughs> Alright! <laughs> oh! Oh yeah, you like that? Ah, good luck trying to fix that, Mr. Fix-It Man! Yeah! Yeah, fix that! All you had to do was open up! Pretty simple! Huh? Yeah, how you like that? Might as well go two for two, since you're not opening up. It's gonna be pretty hard to cut with four flat tires. Well, I'll do you one favor, Terrell. Just give it a wash. Oh, oh, I think I just passed that stone. Oh, just had to relieve myself a little bit. What's that idiot doing? That's a customer's mower. Oh, oh, who is that? Oh. Hey, Carol, I got those boat anchors you wanted. Boat anchors? That ain't boat anchors. Them is Wisconsin engines. Let's see what you brought me here, Elkskin. All right, well, they are anchors to me. This one's pretty cannibalized here. Well, parts, you love parts. Here's a carburetor. I is that, that one. Is that for this one? Yeah. Looks like it. Same look carburetor as that one over there. This, this one here, this is an S12D. This was probably on a Boland's garden tractor. This was for the drive shaft. And here's your PTO. This one I might be able to get running. This has got points and condenser in it. Carol, that white engine has the same setup on the uh, crank, but. Oh, that one there? Yeah, pretty close. Well, let me take a look at that one. With this one here, if I had a coil, I hear it. I don't know. Don't feel like it's got any compression. It's got some. It's got none. Probably has a valve stuck. Might be able to get this one going. What do we got here? This is a TRA 12D. This is similar to this one. This is a 12 and this is a 12. Well, look at the size difference. 
this means you got more torque to play with. Now this one had the solid state ignition and it takes a special coil. It's got to be between like four and six thousand ohms. Well, you don't have one of those in your bedroom? No. Why not? This looks like it might have been on a tractor too. It's got a mount for a starter generator. And what'd you say this one was? I have no idea. But it looks similar to uh, this one, just fixing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it's got extended shaft. I think you're right, Alex, this might be the same as this one. But this one might have magneto ignition. I won't be able to tell until I get behind that flywheel, but that's what it looks like. Got two wires coming out. I think you're right. I think this is another 12D. It looks the same. Hey, what are you, what are you growing a garden back there? What's with all the grass? Oh, well, uh, that's for testing weed eaters. Testing weed eaters? Yeah, you know, customers don't have grass around here. They got sand. You gotta be kidding me. You fill up the back of this truck with dirt and grow a garden back here. Well, and have a mobile garden. This truck was used to haul dirt a few years ago, so could be remnant. Elf skin, the human shop rag. <laughs> All right, let's get the two wheeler and get this crap, I mean, these good engines out of here. Oh, you mean your boat anchors. <laughs> Pterodactyl here, and today we're going to see if we can get this boat anchor, I mean this Wisconsin engine running that I got from Elkskins. Now this is a Wisconsin S12D, and from my research, I believe this was in a Bowens tractor. What model Bowens tractor, I don't know. You Bowens guys, you'll know immediately immediately by looking at it you'll go oh that's out of a 1250 or something so we got this from elk skins we're going to see if we can make it run again so the first thing we're going to do is see if this starter generator is any good now the belt was a little loose so i already went ahead and uh tightened the belt now if you notice on here there's letters and they mean something. F is for the field, which is the magnets and the or part that's around the armature, and A is for the armature. So we want to put positive battery power to the A, and then we just want to ground this. So let me find a good ground. Oh, right here. I'm going to ground it right to this this uh, bolt here. Yeah, maybe to the housing, yeah. That, 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 that's better. That's a lot better. And then we're gonna touch it to here and see if it'll crank over. Whoa, woo! Cranks pretty free. Well, this is either gonna be a long video or a short video. It's like it's got no compression. I hope I don't have a thrown connecting rod. Let's take out the plug. Oh, look at that. I got socket wrench like fingers. Look at that, the old plugs. Look at that big threads on there. Not like the 14 millimeter of today. Okay. Uh, it looks like, oh. Looks like the valve is stuck. Woo! Sounds like the pistione is going up and down. Looks like the valve is stuck. So we're probably going to have to pull the head and unstick the valve. And another thing we need to do is rig up some kind of ignition. You know what? It looks like Fluffy's been in there too. Look at that. Fluffy's been in there. But our coil is missing. Now this has battery ignition. So under here is points. So we need uh, 
a coil and a condenser and a battery. That's pretty neat how that points cover is just held on. So there's the points. This is a kill tab under here. So we need to run a wire from here to the coil and then uh, rig up some kind of uh, ignition. But let's, let's get the valve unstuck first. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the head off. Well, this one snapped off right now, oh, so did this one. Them things are rusted and corroded in there so bad, they just snapped right off. Oh well, that's what happens with old stuff. There we go. The old 916er. Take this off. Oh yeah. Little little nest, not too bad. another 7 16 headed quarter 20 bolt here let's see if this one will come out oh yeah that one came out without snapping it off of course I'm probably not gonna have a oh here's one over here too let's see if this one will come out yep Probably not going to have a head gasket for this. Let me get something to pry on that head. Uh, oh. All right, let's turn it over. Oh, we got two stuck valves. Let's take a little feel around in here. It's not scored up or anything. Pretty good sized piston in there for a 12 horse. A little bit of piston rock there. And this thing's old. I don't know how old, but I'm sure it's old. Alright, let's uh, spray a little WD in there. Let me get a hammer. If you know what time it is, it's hammer time!
the stuff. Let's put a screwdriver in this hole here. Ooh. Go, baby. All right. It's gonna have to keep working them so I can get them freed up. You get a different hammer. Give me some channel locks and give them a little spinach. They still spun free. I don't, I don't really want to go down. It's spinning. Same with this one. Weird. Alright, let's pull the Pull this carburetor off. Pull this valve cover off. I figured if we gave them a few little whack-a-moles. They go up and down on their own. that are stuck, it's the lifters. The lifters that lift the valve. Ha ha ha! All right, we gotta, we gotta take this off. Now I need wrenches. It's already loose. so I could get at that that bolt and it looks like it, somebody made their own little makeshift breather hose but this thing is so hard that when I went to turn it it just broke this was rubber now it's like hard plastic this thing's got some age on it I'll see if we can get this cover off oh the carnage look at that Look at that. Look in there, look at all that carnage. There, that's why our lifters aren't going up and down. It's a crud in there. I'm gonna have to get that out of there, vacuum it out, and then try to free these lifters up. Now this engine does have oil in it, and it looks like fresh oil. See, at the full mark, it's not all milky. You know, if it if it had water in it, it'd be it'd look like cream, like in your coffee. That's what it'd look like. All right, let me loosen this crap up in here. And get the shop back and vacuum it out, and then we'll we'll try lubricating it. Get the valves go up and down. We gotta pull the cover off. I can see there's a lot of crap in there. We want to clean all that out. 
Well, let's get the let's get the valves to go up and down first. Oh, and this throttle shaft is frozen on here. Let's take a look in the bowl real quick. Hopefully, this isn't ruined inside. Oh, thank goodness. Not bad. I see the, the tube, the center tube, looks like it's plugged off, but we could rod that out. And I might have a new old stock fuel pump for this thing up in the parts room that I got from Brother Farrell. Hopefully it's the same, it's the one we need. I don't know, but we'll find out. I know there's a fuel pump up there for a Wisconsin engine. All right, let me get the shop back. You notice I'm wearing an apron? And I know that's what you're thinking. Why, why, should I be, why is he wearing that cooking apron? This doesn't necessarily mean this has got to be a cooking apron. You know, carpenters and, and woodworking guys wear aprons and mechanics. You can wear this for barbecuing, or you can wear it as a mechanic's apron. And do whatever you want with it, it's yours. You can wear it out in public, I don't care. Other people might care. You know, Look at that weird, I'm walking around the nation now. What is he, what, you think he's on a cooking show? Maybe, maybe he's somebody famous. Maybe he's a famous cooking guy. Some of them nasties up. Where's that light? All righty then. All righty then. Okay. Let's let's spray this down and see what happens. Now there's flats on here because this is how you adjust your clearance. See, like on a crawler, like on a crawler K series. The lifter's got flats, and then the top of the lifter has got like a bolt in it. And that's how you you achieve your, your valve clearance. So let me see what wrench will fit on there, maybe half inch. Let me get the, let's get the valves closed first. Let's get the tension off of them. Look at that one starting to go up and down already. Look at there, looky there, that was WD is working. That's also kicking up a bunch of dust. Ooh, look at there. Ooh, got one going up and down, woo woo. All right, see about the other side. Then we'll check the clearance once we get these open and closed. Wiggle that back and forth.
me. Well, going up and down now. All right, now let's uh, let's hook the battery to it, and we can really get them to go up and down. Birdie feathers coming out. Well, we got valves go up and down. There's some crap in there from when we were cycling it. Blow that. I'll use it. Let's see if we can suck that out of there too. Valves go up and down. I'm going to put the valve cover back on. I don't have a gasket. But we just want to see if we can get this running. I'll put the head back on. We'll just use the old gasket. It should seal. I just want to know if we can get it running. Get this kind of cleaned up some. Put that heavy rust off of there. Oh, look at all that. Nasty. Oh, there's part of the gasket that we need. Maybe I'll put a little sealer around there. Little valves here. And I'm going to pull this cover off and clean that out from under there. There's a lot of rust in there. All right, I got it all cleaned out inside. No more stuff rattling around. I put a little sealer on there, which we sell in our online store. The black silicone, the Velco. And then next, uh, I'm going to pull this blower shroud off. Everything is all frozen on this thing. Frozen. Like the movie, Frozen. Elsa. Elsa's frozen. Who's frozen? This is frozen. This is supposed to pivot on there. This is our throttle right here. We gotta get that unfroze, unfrozen. Might as well check it a little. All right, what do we got down here? Are these gonna snap off? Got lucky there, lucky there. I gotta loosen this, this belt off. What does that look like? Five eighths? Let's try five eighths. Five eighths? Oh yeah, five eighths. One over here. That belt off. Maybe. It's hot today. It's real hot. We got the air on in the shop. Yeah, that's right. Air conditioned shop. Oh, another bolt under there. And then we got these. Look at this is busted. I wonder if this is the OEM screen or 
Somebody made that screen. Almost looks like window screen. They made it. They did a pretty good job. I don't know. That looks factory. Usually when people make stuff themselves, it looks like crap. up, snug it, so it don't fall on my hands, put this one down here, oh, which is being, cover is kind of broke, it's blocking it, blocking me from getting the wrench on me. Trying to flip this thing. Oh, this thing is heavy. Yeah, see? See how it's peeled back? Let me see if I can knock that down a little. There we go. Well, we only had two snap off so far. I guess that ain't too bad. Well, here's another one over here. Woo! Get this one out. Don't even feel like it's hooked or nothing. Should have grabbed a ratchet wrench. Carol, you should have grabbed the ratchet wrench. Come on. Carol, you're wasting a lot of film. I'm going as fast as I can. You're not going fast enough. Crap. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's not nice. Isn't that just a pretty sight? Something got in there. Something was eating something in there that had feathers on it. Maybe it was chicken. So this is kind of rotted. Oh, this is like a little angle here. For the cover. What do we got here? Just nesting. A little wasp thing going on. Alright, get that out of here. I got a little bit ahead of myself. I never checked the valve clearance. I just went and bolted that valve cover back on all in a hurry to get this thing running. So I do have a manual, again, got from Brother Farrell. That came from his shop. It's on a TRA 12D, which is very similar to this engine. So they're saying six thousandths on the inlet intake and on the TR, TRA 12, they're saying 15 on the outlet or exhaust inlet. I wonder why they, they called it inlet and didn't call it outlet. All right, so let's see what we got. So here's six thousandths. Got the piston at top dead center, both valves closed. And we wanna make sure when we turn it, not one of them's gonna be opening on us. So we know we're in the right position. And we want to go right in here, and it doesn't fit. So, yeah, we need to get clearance in there. And then here's 15 on the exhaust, and that's real sloppy. All right. So, we need to adjust them. So, 
So where did that half inch wrench go? And then what is this? Is this also? Stupid hands. Yeah, they're both half inch. I gotta find another half inch wrench. All right, so I got my two half inch wrenches and I'm gonna act like I'm tightening this because I need to add clearance. And you can see how hard it is to turn until I can get to six thousandths. Oh, there it is. Little, little sloppy, so let me go back a hair. Now I know you. Oh, money's calling. Woo, money! Now I know what y'all are saying. Why don't you just do a valve job to it, too? Because I want to see if this thing is even going to get running. You know, we're wasting a bunch of time doing a valve job. And then find out this thing, I can't get it to run for one reason or another because I don't have the part. All right, that's good. There's our six. Now this is real sloppy 15. So this one, we want to act like we're loosening because we want to close it up because it's got too much clearance. So you just keep going a little bit at a time. You probably messed up those clearances when you were trying to spin those cabinets. No. You're wrong. No, I think I'm right. I think you're wrong. I hardly put any pressure on it. Not enough like this. I mean, you really got to tug on these things to get it to move. They don't want it to move easy. Otherwise, your clearance would be all over the place. Boy, they're really sloppy. We'll go a little bit more that time. Yeah, we're getting there. Starting to get snug. Yeah, that feels good right there. Got a little bit of drag on it. All right, now, Terrell, you can put the valve cover back on. And the head. And this little bracket that holds the cover on here broke off. Okay, Terrell. Let's put a little bit more of that silicone on there. Put a little of silicone on there, Terrell. Now you can put the cover on. I know what I can do! Boy, we're a testy, aren't we, Terrell? I'm just making a suggestion. That's the right one. So judging from the carbon deposits on the head here and the top of the piston, it doesn't really look like it was, you know, burning a lot of oil here. I mean, it is a little, it's a little galled up here on the side. I don't feel a, a real, a whole lot, a re, uh, excuse me. I don't feel a whole lot of uh, ridge on here from the rings. So there is some little bit of scoring in there from the lack of, <coughs> excuse me, geez. From the lack of oil changes, frequent oil changes. I'm gonna spray a little Little WD on the, I think these two on here. Spray just a little, little bit of this light WD on the thread. And then we'll go ahead and torque the head down. See what kind of compression we got. I 
I could grill these out later. That didn't. It? All right. Yeah. This one over here. There you go, Carol. All right, we got it all reassembled again, and I freed this up since I had it off, so we can get our throttle to work. And I got my compression tester hooked up, so let's see what kind of compression we might have. Now, I don't know how accurate this, this thing is, but it seems like it's really struggling. Or this battery, battery's dead. Well, what is that? 25, 30, 35, 40. It should be enough. It should start. It sounds like it's thumping. Well, let's get spark out of it and see if it'll fire. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying. It ain't gonna run. I don't have enough compression. It ain't gonna run. Or this compression tester I bought is a piece of crap. So next, we're gonna see if we can get spark out of it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use an Oregon branded crawler coil for a K-series engine. and a crawler condenser. And then I gotta make a coil wire. So I've got this coil wire, which has got solid wire in the middle. We don't wanna use a carbon wire, too much resistance. I'm gonna use a solid metal wire. So this has got copper conductor inside. And I had a roll of this, I bought somewhere. But this is, uh, some Borg Warner stuff I got somewhere. Some guy was selling a bunch of stuff and this was in it, 100 feet of this wire and I've used quite a bit of it. And then I went to the auto parts store and these are distributor terminals. From Standard Brand. I don't know if any of this information will help you, ST22. But I got these from my local auto parts store. Because we need this this type of terminal so we could stab it in there. And then on the other end, I got a 90 degree terminal, which again I got from an auto parts store. Where I stripped this back, exposed the copper wire, bent it over, and then crimped this on the end. And then see there's our our distributor end. And then I got me an old plug boot. And then I'll spray a little, little WD on that. Shove it into this old plug boot I ripped off of some coil. So now I got a boot. The only thing I don't have is a little boot for this. But I'll find one somewhere. But see how that snaps in there nice and tight? You can hear that click in. And then that little rubber boot that would normally be on there helps keep water out and keep it from. And then I'm gonna have to make me a, a temporary little coil mount. Now you can see on this bracket, that's where the coil went. So I made this out of some plumbing strap. 
So we're going to mount the coil there, temporary. And then let's look and see if our points are opening and closing. Yeah, they're open. And I got a points file. You can use sandpaper. But I got this old points file. That's what this one I got looks like. It's just like a thick, heavy piece of like sandpaper. Because that's what we need. We need to make sure there's no corrosion or anything on here. And then of course we're gonna we're gonna check the gap to the book. We want them at their widest point. And then all we gotta do is loosen that screw and then that little slot there we can open and close the points. Now the condenser went here, but since I don't have the right condenser, I'm just gonna mount the condenser like on a crawler. I'm just gonna mount it with the coil on one of the terminals. And then the other end, you know, like with the crawler, will go here. So let me get everything set up and hooked up. And fingers crossed, we'll see if we got spark. We got fire. We got fire and we got enough compression. If we shoot a little, a little carb spray in there, it should lick off. Now I've got the ignition all hooked up. Now for those of you who don't know how battery ignition works, I'm gonna explain it to you. So we have our coil, and it's got a positive and negative on it. On the negative side, we got our condenser. Now whether we have our condenser under here where it originally went and would have hooked to this stud, or we got it up here, it doesn't matter. So our condenser is hooked to the negative side, and then we have a wire that runs from the negative side to the little stud on the points under here. And then the positive side, we're gonna run 12 volts. We're gonna have 12 volts to it. So the way to kill the engine is, is when you disconnect the 12 volts, it stops it from sparking. So now I got my inline spark tester hooked up and I'm gonna hook this jumper wire to the positive side of the battery. See, we got a little sparkage action there. And when I touch this to the starter generator, we should have spark. Now, one thing on battery ignition is if you leave the key on, the coil gets real hot. And depending on what position the points are in, sometimes the points will weld themselves together. That's where that Kirk engine's transdenser would come in handy. You could probably hook one of them on here since we're using basically a Kroller ignition. We could put that transdenser on here and we'd be able to to lower the voltage going to the points and them points would probably last forever. So I'm gonna put the points cover back on. We're gonna take this engine, we gotta secure it somehow. Cause I don't wanna start it up here on this, on this table and then have it start thrashing around and bad things could happen. We're gonna start it on a table. Table, Carol, we wanna see bad things happen. Give me a minute to Get this thing on the floor and we'll go from there. All right, let's give it a good dose. He wants to. ignition 
It wanted to. I don't know if this battery I got is cranking it fast enough. We use this thing a lot. I should probably charge it. Timing's off. Let me see if I can get a stronger battery. Crank this thing faster. Well, now we got it mounted to our test frame. So I'm going to power up the coil again. And I got a, a new battery from up front. It doesn't seem like it's cranking it any faster. I don't know. Maybe the starter generator got to be taken apart and cleaned and gone through. And I may have to do a valve job. Let's find out. Or good thing because that thing would have danced around it would have been dancing around Woo like Jessica White it would have been dancing all around Woo so good thing we we uh, mounted it down because I needed to I needed to mist it I had to get further away it needs a mist it doesn't need a bunch of it poured in there it needs a fine sprain mist like a like a fine sprain mist now we gotta go through the carburetor. Now I've got the float off the carburetor and this needle looks like it's brand new. And look, it's got a little, a little pin on the end and a spring. Oh, how'd you like to drop that? You'll never find that if you drop it. And then I looked a little closer at this tube that's in the center. I thought it was plugged but it looks like it's supposed to be soldered over like that. And this is our high speed needle. So I'm just gonna, I, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that that fuel pump's no good. So I'm gonna gravity feed this with our auxiliary tank. So I'm just gonna put it back together and uh, mount it back on the, uh, on the engine and hook up our auxiliary tank, gravity feed it. I could uh, I could hook up our auxiliary tank to the fuel pump and we could crank it over with the battery and see if it starts pumping, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's that all the diaphragms in there and stuff are probably hard as a carp. Oh I did get the throttle freed up. While we were messing, you know, I sprayed some WD on there. And while we was messing around with the valves and, and getting spark out of it, I just kind of started turning it. It started moving a little bit and it freed up. So that letting it soak in there worked. I'll lightly blow it out. Now this, this screw here, this is a low speed. I know this thing is stuck. I don't want to break it off either. Oh, there we go. It's moving a little. Oh, it's coming out. Goody, goody. Maybe I'll buff it. Take it over on the wire wheel. You know, I got a little got a little wire brush too. Maybe that'll be enough to we gravity feed it. 
it should run. How about the idle screw? Oh yeah, that turns. Okay, let's uh, let's let's put it back on the engine and uh, hook up our throttle link. Let me see, is this high speed turning? Oh yeah. I hope that seal in there is good. I don't want to put gas on it and just start pouring out the bottom. Maybe we'll get lucky. We got lucky so far. All right. Let's reinstall. We've got our auxiliary tank hooked to the fuel pump. And this is the in and this is the out. So we're just gonna crank it over and see if any gas will come shooting out of here. Yeah, because that fuel pump is no good. You know what? It's only two screws, right? Let me go get that one that Farrell had. That only take a minute. I'm going upstairs. I'm going to get fuel pump. Hi. Hi. Boy, it's hot up here. Okay, this is the one that my brother Farrell gave me. I can't even see the whole part number, but it looks like it's not the same. It's, this arm is different. This would have to be turned. Not working. I guess. All right. Well, we'll take it apart later. Maybe we can fix it. Let me reinstall. It's all rusty too. Look at that. So rusty barnacle. Well, let me reinstall and we'll just gravity feed it and see what happens. Got carburetor reinstalled. I flipped up the inlet to the carburetor because I didn't want that fuel line running near that exhaust and I don't want no fire start. So we got the fuel line above the carburetor doesn't appear to be leaking the gas is on uh, the choke was stuck i sprayed some lubricant on that and was able to free that up so let's hook our power to the coil and see if this thing will run on its own power Make sure that's up this choke
It runs! It is alive! It is alive! It's alive! It's alive! We got this old boat anchor, as Elkskins called it. I'll turn the fan on. We got the air on. Did I mention that? Yeah, I mentioned it. You mentioned it like 10 times now. Look at that. We brought it back to life. I might be able to, uh, that old, uh, that other fuel pump, I might be able, between this one and that one, make a good one out of this one. And, uh, yeah, probably could take it apart and do a valve job. You know, it's missing and popping a little bit. Might need a valve job. Resurface the valves. Other than that, oh, a little bit of oil shooting out of here. Oh, I guess this, I see some oil here. I bet you this bolt here goes right into the block. Let me get some. A lot of these old cast iron motors, yeah. You know, these holes would be tapped all the way through. Like on that other Wisconsin, on the Ride Master. Look at that. Full of dirt and I mean, stuff. Yeah, it runs. We brought it back to life. See? It's not that hard. It's get, well, maybe it's hard for you. But, you know, you get the old engine, a couple of things we had to do, the three things. Got to have compression, got to have spark, got to have fuel. We put all three things to it and brought it back to life. <laughs> It lives again! <laughs> now, what do you might be looking for in this motor? Maybe you got an old Bowens and what am I going to do with it? I'll tell you, this starter generator alone, worth a hundred bucks right there. But yeah, I have no use for this engine. I'd be willing to sell it. It runs now. It just needs a little bit more and a more tender loving can. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Carol Fixes All. This is me, the guy that brings you back to life. <laughs> Follow me with your antique engines on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. You can buy this. You can buy this shop apron. You could go work on your engine in your garage or in your shop, and then, how do you get the grill started? Oh, okay, baby, I'll go get the grill started and then go, then go barbecue. And, you know, pull out some old parts and stuff and throw them on the grill. We sell these. You know, check out our other stuff, too. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Jumped right back into this engine here, this, this boat anchor, and did a valve job. Now it's got a lot more compression. That exhaust valve was kind of warped. I fixed the fuel pump. The problem with the fuel pump was the inlet and the outlet fittings were plugged with crap. So I took it apart, cleaned it, put two new fittings in there, new piece of fuel line, ran an actual wire from the points to the coil now. Fixed the, uh, cleaned up the uh, valve cover, and then went to my local distributor where they have some Wisconsin parts, and, and Steve, who I know over there, hey Steve, he watches the videos. He hooked me up with a new head gasket and valve cover gasket. Then I was also able to use this Kroller vent tube. So if you guys got one of these in a Bowens and you need that vent tube, you're like, I can't get that vent tube from Wisconsin. It's hard to get. Nobody's got it. This one will work. And here's the part number. There, take it in. Take in that part number. So it fit perfect. 
I don't know if he can catch that. And then I needed an air filter. Now, some of you guys might already know all this, but this Briggs and Scranton one, this aftermarket Briggs and Scranton one from Stens worked. This might have even been a Briggs and Scranton one. Look at that thing. Throw that thing right in the, right in the bin. So there's the part number for that Stens one, and there's all the Briggs numbers. And I put a new belt on it. I need this, this pulley's bad. Well, I don't need it. Whoever buys it is gonna need that. Maybe somebody's got an engine that's throwing a rod and they can take a lot of parts off of it. I took the starter generator apart, just went through it, everything looked good, cleaned it, sandblasted these studs, get all that rust off of there. Elkskins thinks he might have a coil mount. He's gonna look. And uh, so now the fuel pump works, everything works. So I'm gonna crank it over and show you how much more compression it's got since I did that valve job. Look now, 50, 60 pounds, there's 75, 50, 55, 60. Try it again. Yep. So now it's got a lot more compression. So let's uh, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Again. I need this compression tractor out of here. Yeah, the valve, didn't need a valve job. Oh yeah, I also fixed those bolts that snapped off. The one I had to drill out and it was off center and then I drilled it out and Healy coiled it and the other one I was able to get out. Fixed all the cracks in the shroud, welded them all up. Welded that tab that was broken off. So this thing is, is, is pretty much there for somebody. Got our ignition hooked up. Let's uh, fire it up. Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up again. For one of these, for one of your Brolins, Brolins. That's a Bro, Bolins Bro, Brolins. I'll sell you this one. I ain't shipping it though. This thing weighs a ton. You're gonna have to come get it. Yeah, runs now. Doesn't smoke or nothing. There's your dinner. There is your dinner. What do you think you're doing? That's a customer's lawnmower. This was like this when I got here. Why didn't you open the door? I've been trying to get my chainsaw chains for like five minutes. I had to give Junior a jump start. I had the close sign up. It said I'd be back in 20 minutes. I'm a truck driver. I don't read no signs. Yeah, evidently. This guy's gonna be real upset when he sees the condition of this lawnmower. Uh, holy samole! What the heck did you do to my lawnmower? Terrell? It wasn't me, Anthony. Scruffy is the one that did it. I didn't do nothing. This, this mower was like this when I got here. I, I'm just trying to pick up some chains. Somebody's got some explaining to do. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to call the boys down here and settle up. Don't call the boys, Anthony. 
We could settle this right here. Scruffy's just gonna have to pay to, to fix it. Why should I pay? I didn't do nothing. I just came to pick up some chains. This is all his fault. Oh no. You smashed this guy's mower when I was away. Ah, uh, what's it? Uh, this thing leaking gas now, too? Oh. Smells like 87 octane. Oh yeah, gasoline. That's exactly what that is. All right, hey. This is all the money I got on me. Hey. Yeah, what do we got here, huh? Uh. Two, three, four dollars? You better cough up something with the hoot. You want to keep them kneecaps, buddy. Uh, I'm going to keep the money, too. Well, uh, I got this rare action figure. Uh, I just picked this up. Autographed by Larry Walker. Larry Walker, huh? That's not autographed by Larry Walker. It's just got your name written on this scruffy. That ain't Larry Walker. Oh. Well, here, let me get that back. No. What else you got? Uh, that, that, that's all I got on me. How about that crowbar? <laughs> Something yeah. tells me that's gonna come in real handy in about five seconds. Yeah. 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 Come on, you jerk! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's that? What do we got here? Love a boy. Oh, they do that tune. Loving every minute of it. Yeah, loving every minute of it. Oh, I love that song back in the '80s. Oh, it was great. You just redeem yourself, buddy. I'll take the tape. That's great. So uh, we're all squared up then, right? Uh, yeah, sure, buddy. Yeah, we're fair and square, even Steven. You know, I've been looking for one of these since my tape player ate it back in the 80s. <laughs> or I'd beat it, punk, before I changed my mind. Wait a minute here. What about this mower? Lead a double life. Oh, this piece of fecal matter? Uh, you can just have it. I was just giving it to you for pots, Terrell. The motor's blown. Transmission's shot. Needs belts. Now it's got four flat tires. So yeah, you can just have it for pots. All right, Terrell, take it easy, yeah? Oh, all right. Well, hey, thanks. Oh, love a boy. This is gonna take me back down memory lane. I love these guys. Oh wait, what is this? New kids on the block hanging tough. This isn't what I wanted. Ugh, I'm gonna pound that friggin' loser. Oh.